Hey guys, Papa Pete back with another pickup video and uh, I'm wearing the shirt. So look what I have. Another huge box from the Intellivision Collector. And I know a lot of the stuff that's in here. And I'm telling you right now, there's some fantastic additions to my collection. Almost uh, historic additions to my collection. So I can't wait to show it with you. Stop clogging the microphone. Stick around. Papa Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up by the age of 50, you don't have to. For all your Intellivision collecting needs, check out IntellivisionCollector.com, including their newest homebrew releases, Vanguard, The Show Must Go On, Penguin Land, and Poker Risque. Ooh, la, la. Plus, there's even more to come later in 2022. That's in televisioncollector.com. All right, guys, so can't wait to open that box, but I have to do the craft beer first. And today, from Halifax, Nova Scotia, we have one from Propeller Brewing. Uh, fantastic. I don't know what to think of this one. It is Earl Grey Pale Ale, 5.5% alcohol. So let's check this one out. Oh, open it up. Didn't spray everywhere when I opened it. I've been having hard luck with that lately. Nice color. Trying to get the aroma here as I pour it. We'll move the microphone right away from the cat. Okay, here we go. Pull it over here. Is it down to reach yet? We'll see how it goes here. A nice aroma it's fairly clear different kind of flavor it does have a little bit of an earl gray tea flavor if you like that in your ale pale ale featuring idaho seven and citra hops to complement earl gray tea citrus and floral uh, floral aromas of a bergamot orange and black tea well you know what what this one isn't gonna go bad and if somebody said would you like to have one yeah it's not that bad but i probably wouldn't buy too many of them but that being said, try it out for yourself. Not a bad beer at all. And I like Propeller beers. They put out different stuff. Uh, they have a place, a couple places, right, right in the heart of Halifax, uh, that are a lot of fun to go to, including a great barcade. So if you ever get the opportunity to check that out in downtown Halifax, by all means, you should do so. And try, if you can, maybe you want to try an Earl Grey Pale Ale while you're there. Cheers. All right, so without any further ado, let's get to this box. Look at the size of it. Fantastic thing. It's not going to take me very long to open it. You'd think I'd learn by now to have the knife out before I went to open, wouldn't you? All right. Man. It's not real heavy, but games aren't heavy, so. There it is. Look at that. Well, the packaging that Luke does when he ships his games is amazing. Put that out of the way. Got some nice foam right up top. Look at the first thing I see. And he did tell me about this. Asked if I was interested in it. It is fairly crushed box. He said there's no characters, but it's a box that he got in a collection uh, that he bought a whole big collection. And it is Battlezone. Um... Atari 2600, I don't think I have Battle Zone. So it's kind of neat. It said, you know, he wasn't going to do anything with it. Didn't really, wasn't able to sell it. So he threw that in. So that's awesome. Next up, I got another Atari 2600 game. Robot Tank. And this one is complete. Not in great shape. Got the sticker on it, though. Where's it from? If I can see it here. Uh, Loyalité. Loyalty. Yeah, I don't know. That's what's on the, that's what's on the price tag right there. But Robot Tank, uh, whoever he got this collection from, obviously liked those games because those are very similar games. Battle, uh, Battle Zone, Robot Tank. Um, I wouldn't even dare say which one's better, really. I love Battle Zone in the arcade. I really did. I used to play that a lot when I was a kid, even though I was terrible at it. Very hard to be good at that game. And uh, it seems to me I played some of that when I was a kid, too. It was a board or something, or at least borrowed this one because I didn't have it when I was a kid. But, of course, I have it now, and now I have it again, so that's even better, you know. So it's always good to have... Uh, he, he wasn't, again, doing anything with these, so ooh, great. I love these Atari games, absolutely. The next one he did tell me about as well. This is one I didn't know if I'd ever have. 
It is an accolade title that's often considered to be the 45th Activision title, and it's Tomcat, the F-14 Fighter Simulator. Fantastic flight simulation game, a really advanced, uh, late in the Atari 2600 lifestyle, lifestyle lifetime, and um, uh, done, like I said, down here by Absolute Entertainment, which was, uh, who was it? Like, I'll pro try to remember, I'll put the pictures here, the names below, who left Activision actually and formed this group and programmed a game or two. I think it was this, and it was either a baseball or a wrestling game for the Atari 2600, but it was right on the verge of when they were leaving Activision, so that's why this is sometimes considered. Uh, it also has something to do with the fact, I believe in Europe it was actually released under Activision, but over here it was released under Absolute, uh, but it was right there on the cusp. So uh, if you're going for a complete Activision collection for the Atari 2600, like I am, I'm only four short, uh, this is a great one to add to it because it's one of those borderline type titles, right? Put some gameplay in here too, because Man, it's, it's, it's really advanced for the Atari 2600. All right, we're going to get down in a little bit deeper here now. Oh, the next one is one of the Intellivision Collector homebrew titles. Uh, IC003, I have got a copy of Penguin Land right on the Sega Classic from back in the day. Uh, I've streamed this some. I've also, of course, suspended the Any Homebrew Spotlight, uh, News of Spotlight, where the, with the release. It was released last month. Um, available now from IntellivisionCollector.com. I'll throw some gameplay in here. This is me playing it, so remember that. I'm not very good at the game, but this is me playing it when I had, because uh, I've also got it for my Ultimate Flashback, but I had love to have the physical copies as well. And uh, take a look. There's the, look, this has got the translucent, oh, I'll get a picture of the close-up here of the cartridge, but it's got the translucent uh, cartridge, smoke gray, it's beautiful, and look at the full-colored manual, uh, two overlays, and of course right there, the television collector, there's a logo in there, televisioncollector.com, right here on the spine, IC003, beautiful, I can't wait to collect all of the television collector homebrew releases, so... This is three. Poker Risque Ooh, la, la. is four. Uh, and five and six are going to be announced very, very soon, if not already by the time you see this video. So check out and wait for them as well, because I kind of got an idea of what they're going to be. And you're not going to be disappointed, let me tell you that. They're fantastic games. So anyway, in the meantime, Penguin Land, thrilled to have this copy right here. All right, so let's go in a little deeper. And I see it. Or why, that foam is just great for packing. I'm going to keep that. Uh, oh, what do I love about Intellivision? Not just the 125, but the different subsets. And my favorite subset of all time is the Sears subset. I only need four games. This is a common game. It's not a real difficult, real difficult game to find. I've seen it go expensively on uh, eBay and stuff, but I've never really had the, been lucky enough to get it myself. But I finally have Super Video Arcade Sears Basketball. And there it is. Complete inbox. Overlays. Got the manual there, which actually, in reality, the only differences are the box and the manual. The cartridge is the same as the NBA. It even has NBA basketball on the cartridge. Uh, a lot of them did that were sold by Sears because they were the same carts. Even though there's no mention of NBA on the Sears box, right? It's just basketball. Uh, and the overlays are the same as well. So thrilled to finally add that baby right there to my collection. So I'm down to three. Three needed. But the three hard ones for the Sears library. But on that note, let's get another one. Here is one that I've been chasing and haven't been able to find in so long. It is Super Video Arcade Backgammon, the Sears version of that. And I don't know if you're into backgammon or not, but I'll be quite honest. I had never played backgammon as a kid uh, until I played it on the Atari 2600. And I really, really enjoyed it. So <laughs> if you could hear her purring, um, I really, really enjoyed the time. So I'm looking forward to playing this on the Intellivision as well. Um, not to mention the fact this is in beautiful condition, and this is a very difficult title to find because they just didn't sell very many of them. Let's open up, take a look. Oh, there's the cartridge, both overlays, and again the manual. As long as you have the box and you have the manual, you can complete the rest of it no problem. But uh, man, I am thrilled to finally have backgammon, and that is 27 out of 29. But wait, there's more. Look at this one. 
Here it is, another one of these classic games. She's laying on the microphone now. Anyway, uh, Super Video Arcade Roulette. Awesome friggin' game. Uh, I really don't play roulette very well, and I'm saying it's an awesome freaking game. Not really so much about playing the game, because I didn't play roulette, the original 125, that much either. But man, it's hard to get this one in the Sears collection. This is number 28 out of 29. And there it is. There's the manual, and there's the, the cartridge. Nice white tray. Oh, fantastic condition. This is amazing. Simply amazing. So I am so happy to finally add these two. Uh, three to my collection. So now I've got 28 out of 29 of those games in the Sears collection. So um, I'm just flabbergasted. I was absolutely thrilled when I found out Luke had it. I had the opportunity to get these games from Luke. Oh, I can't leave it at that, can I? There's one more in there. If you haven't watched the 125 about Jedi, the best comment I had on that whole video was from my buddy Jeff who said, I can't believe that you made a 20 minute about 20 minute video about television checkers. And I sat and watched it. That's what Jeff said to me. It was hilarious because there's actually so many interesting things, different versions about the, uh, of this game for the Intellivision, whether it's the Checkers Dom, French Canadian version, or the drafts from uh, from England. And of course, the only one of those that I didn't have, thanks to Seamart, was uh, the... Uh, the actual Sears version, and this is one of the most difficult games to get for the Sears uh, collection. So this, as well, finally finishes my Sears collection. I am absolutely thrilled to have all 29 different Sears games. There's the manual. Oh! Thankfully, again, the cartridge doesn't bother any. There's even the logo on the cartridge from, that would be the Checkers Association of America, which isn't on this box, or whatever the name of the group was. Which actually was made up by Intellivision when they put it on there. Yes, the chess group was real. Yes, the back gamer group was real. So they said, well, we better get the group for checkers. Well, there was no group for checkers, so they just made up a logo and stuck it on the cartridge. But anyway, uh, absolutely friggin' thrilled to have this. Thank you, Luke, so much for thinking of me when you got this collection in, because, yes, I was all over it and wanted to pick that up because now um you know it's hard to complete collections whether it's the 125 or it's a subset like the activision ones for uh for the atari 2600 it's just very very difficult so uh finally i am so happy i got the complete sears collection and you may know of one and no i do not have it here today but there's actually another variant of night stalker that's available for the sears version uh, as well that has a white tray instead of the cardboard cutout and the cardboard cutout one you see often extremely common very inexpensive but the white tray one is more expensive uh i still just consider it 29 in the complete set because all that is is a variant uh, the Hong Kong version, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. But I, it's a variant. So, of course, if you started going with every variant that was involved with every little set, uh, you really would never end. So I was just looking for the 29 um, from the Sears version, and that was it. Coco, you'll stay out the microphone as long as I scratch your neck. Right. Anyway, guys, um, one more time. I love it when I get a box for the Intellivision Collector Van, and this one is absolutely fantastic. Some great Atari games for my collection, including one for my Activision subset, uh, the Tomcat uh, F-14 uh, simulator, uh, a fantastic homebrew number three of the Intellivision Collector releases, Penguin Land, and the last four Sears titles that I need for my collection. doesn't get any better than that. When you're an Intellivision lover, collector like myself, man, this... Let me tell you as a pickup. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with Coco and I here today. Uh, man, I can't wait for the next pickup because we'll see what comes then. Anyway, guys, you take care. We'll see you next time. Papa P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up. Hey guys, this is Willie from Arcade USA, and you're watching Papa Pete, the old guy gamer.